Hey guys, good morning. Uh, today we're going to be doing some work on the 66 Mustang here. We've got to get the motor and tranny ready to pull out. Uh, we're going to get the motor out today, uh, hopefully, motor and transmission out of there, and get ready to tear it down. I'm going to get the motor up on the engine stand so we can pull the heads off of it and inspect the bores, flip it over, check the crank mains, and make sure that things look okay. If there's any suspect wear or uh, damage internally to any of the bearings, uh, we're going to yank it uh, completely apart and replace all the bearings at a minimum. Uh, hopefully we don't have to get into any machine work, but we're going we're gonna to find that out uh, when we get her cracked open. I've been ordering a lot of parts, uh, as you can see here. Uh, I think I ordered about one of each from the catalog here. Uh, I ordered uh, the parts from MPD. My dad brought me an MPD catalog and the prices were so good that I couldn't complain. So that's where we've ordered parts from. And I have a huge box here from NPD that I haven't opened yet full of great stuff for our Mustang project. So it's time to get the hands dirty and, and get this car rolling. I have been doing some work on the old Ford uh, that I didn't put on video. I didn't want to put anything out there that wasn't uh, technical or interesting. So I've got a few things done here lately. I replaced the wiper cowl that was cracked and damaged uh, and I managed to find a service truck white wiper cowl at the junkyard. Go figure. Painted the wiper post while I was in there, vacuumed out all the leaves and dirt and rocks and crap that had built up down in the bottoms of those uh, of the corners of the cowl at the back of the fenders so it wouldn't rust out my fenders in the future hopefully. And part of replacing that cowl was pulling out the radio antenna so I pulled the radio out and sorted out some of my wiring gremlins that I had back there where the we would hit a bump and the radio would shut off and uh, turn on the headlights and the, the truck would shut off, things like that. So I was able to, to sort out a bunch of that crap from that bad radio install previously and get all that stuff sorted out. Uh, put in an old radio I had sitting around here just temporarily until I do the double DIN unit. Um, and everything's working great as far as that goes. And now the truck doesn't shut off when you change radio stations. It's great. And we even threw six adults in the truck last night and went out to dinner with it. So uh, she's getting a little more civilized, actually. And as you can see sitting over here, I've got big plans and lots of parts to go on that truck here soon. We're going to start with the rear leafs in an upcoming video. And then we're going to get to uh, these big old parts I've got sitting over here at the end of the bench. But I'm still acquiring parts to, to get that suspension work uh, started on the truck so in the meantime we've got a lot of work to do here on the Mustang so that's what today's video is about and today we're gonna start tearing into this thing what's great about ordering parts from one of these large suppliers like uh, NPD is that you can get some really cool stuff you know they they have a lot of uh, nice replacement aftermarket pieces uh, for the Mustang uh, we've got a lot of cool upgrade parts for the Mustang Moog, uh, genuine Moog parts, but the, the coolest thing I think is that they also stock old Ford OEM parts like these belts that have been relabeled for resale that came off of some dealer's shelf somewhere that went back into stock. And they're actually original Ford manufactured belts. Uh, lots of motorcraft parts. You can actually get some really good stuff and the prices are great. Um, the only downside to deal with when working with uh, shipping large quantities of parts is sometimes you have to deal with returns and damaged items but as you can see here we have a ton of stuff to keep me busy for a while uh, lots of really cool upgraded parts and uh, new parts and just replacement stuff that need to be done on the Mustang here um, what I tried to do as a strategy is spread spread around the budget that we have as much as possible get as much done uh, on body, interior, uh, engine performance, transmission, and still take care of those critical areas that need um, replaced parts. But while this is a lot of stuff, it's just the, just the beginning, just the tip of the iceberg and what we're going to have to do here for the Mustang. I intentionally did not order anything for the engine internals. I didn't order any engine gaskets yet. I didn't order anything that we may have to buy a whole motor rebuild kit. Uh, anything that might be included in that rebuild kit I, I left off my list. Because the internal state of the of the motor is really unknown at this point. So until I pull it out and can tear it apart and inspect it, uh, I don't want to have to 
double purchase anything, so I, I've left those parts off my list. I'm hoping the old C4 slush box is still in usable condition and that once we uh, do a filter and fluids change, possibly two fluid changes depending on how bad it looks, what comes out of it, um, we sh I'm hoping that we'll be in good shape with the transmission. You know, those old C4s and C6s are real durable trannies as long as you don't abuse them and uh, hopefully that's the case with this one. So I've got a ton of parts to replace. Uh, my strategy is I'm going to separate everything out into groups, interior group, exterior group, uh, and underneath group, you know, rear axle stuff, uh, transmission stuff, motor mount stuff. Get all of those groups kind of separated and put away so that I can start start making some progress on one group at a time and, uh, and not get too overwhelmed with having just a big pile of stuff and not able to bolt it all on in one day. So much like the P48 project, I'm going to do one separate video of some of the progress I get done, uh, kind of a daily um, update as to the work that gets done here on the Mustang, and try to keep things rolling, uh, get work done every day, and, uh, and if all goes well, we'll hear this thing purr in here in, in just a few weeks' time. So here we've got all of our awesome exterior goodies, lots of great stuff, including the backup lights, because uh, on the Mustang here, the backup lights have been removed. We're going to put those back on. Uh, these are all of our suspension parts. I've got lower control arms, uh, upper control arm ball joints. I've got uh, new bushing kit for the strut rods, U-joints, um, sway bar end links, other bushings, more bushings. Uh, here I've got uh, automatic transmission parts. I've got all of the little bushings for the shifter to take the slop out of the shifter. Uh, we've got a transmission filter replacement. Um, all of our engine components here, we've got pretty much one of everything that we need. All of the ignition components, carburetor rebuild kit, um, belts, hoses, water pump, fan clutch, fuel pump, uh, including the new stainless hard line for the fuel pump uh, up to the carburetor. That's, that's a great component. Of course, motor mounts. And then we've got some brake stuff here. I haven't got any parts for the front brakes because I think we're going to be doing a disc brake conversion on the front of this car. Um, that's the way I want to go. So I didn't get a master cylinder. I didn't get uh, any front brake lines or anything because all of that stuff's going to get replaced uh, when we do that disc brake swap. One of the considerations I had to make when ordering parts for the Mustang here is that we're not doing a show quality restoration. This car is going to be a driver at this point, so I had to keep that in mind when ordering parts uh, and spread the budget around as much as possible and try and get as big a bang for the buck as I could out of the money uh, that we have for the budget. And my goal right now is to get everything on the car 100% functional, 100% usable. And if down the road the owner of the car decides that she wants to do a concourse restoration or go a little bit further and replace a, a lot more components with OEM parts and do a full body and repaint on the car. Um, at that point we can replace some of these smaller items because we're going to be spending a lot of money to do something like that. That allows me to hit more areas of the car and get more done uh, with the same amount of money as I could uh, if I had top quality number one component lower control arms I might not be able to get upper ball joints so uh, you know keep that in mind when you're planning your getting a car back on the road or, or a partial restoration how great is it though to see that top working I'm so stoked about that oh, it works great not going to force it all the way down in there with that with that bad plastic window that it's having to fold shut and uh, you know the state of the top right now I'm not going to try and force it all the way down in there where it's supposed to go but that's that's a good enough test we can see that all the hinge functions work the hydraulics are working great awesome that is that is very good to see man what a great car what what is better than a convertible uh, here in Southern California. There's nothing better than cruising around in a vert. Um, so I'm, I'm super excited that the top works and that uh, we don't have any functional problems there. No major electrical problems. Everything worked pretty good. 
I haven't tested the wipers yet. I've got to clean the windshield, clean the wiper blades, uh, lube up the windshield before I turn them on. Um, because if you don't if you don't clean everything very well, and you just turn on your wiper switch, uh, if you had a good windshield, you're going to have a bad windshield as soon as those wiper arms start flopping around on there. So I've got to clean all that up, get the arms cleaned up, lube up the windshield a little bit, and then turn the wipers on and see see how the arms work because these arms don't lock up. If they locked into the up position, I could just test them that way, but uh, they don't have a locking pin on them. So yeah, top works great. Um, it's just a great car all around. I have yet to find anything that I'm really bummed out about on this car. So it's time to, uh, I'm going to get that windshield clean, get the wipers tested, disconnect the electrical system so I can yank that motor out of there. Well guys, the disassembly on the Mustang here is going pretty well. I'm taking off uh, everything I can before I pull the motor out. I need to get all the accessory drives off. Get I uh, pulled the carb off already. I need to, I'd need i like to get the distributor out, but the distributor is giving me a hard time. It's seized up inside. I'm not sure if the gears are seized together or if it's uh, the O-ring. Maybe somebody's RTV'd the O-ring into the intake manifold. I tried some heat to burn off whatever might be in there and uh, maybe get the get the distributor drive out uh, unfortunately that didn't work for me so um, what I'm probably going to do is leave the distributor body in uh, the motor and when I get it out here on the engine stand I'll uh, pull the oil pump off and see if I can drive it out from the bottom maybe get the timing set off and I should be able to see where the corrosion's at that's holding it together uh, and get that out when it's on the stand uh, I did discover that all of the water passages are rotted and plugged up, so uh, it's a good thing I decided to go ahead and yank the motor out. That's the right way to do it. Uh, I didn't realize that the corrosion was so bad inside, so um, all of those water passages and water jackets need to be cleaned out properly inside. All the freeze plugs got to come out. Um, oil galley plugs need to come out. Everything needs to get cleaned and uh, thoroughly uh, inspected as it gets torn down. So I've got the carb here and uh, in one of the upcoming videos I'll do a video on how to tear apart the carb and uh, rebuild rebuild the carb. Uh, I've got a secondary diaphragm here that I'm going to install as well um, and get all of the gaskets, all the jets out, clean all the jets, uh, replace all the gaskets that, that are probably <laughs> completely uh, hardened up over the years of sitting dry and uh, get all the gum and varnish out of the carburetor and, and make a good working clean carburetor again. Um, so I'm going to put that in an upcoming upcoming video of how, how that goes. Hopefully that goes better than removing the distributor did today. I was happy to see that all the electronics seemed to be working pretty well. Um, I didn't have too many things that were non-functional. The dash works, uh, all of the signal lights are working, all of the uh, tail lights, headlights, all of that stuff is working. Even the top motor is, is pumping hydraulic fluid and was able to, I was able to put the top down and cycle it a couple of times with lube on all of the hinge points so that the, the top frame wouldn't buckle or bend. And everything's working great as far as the top goes. Um, I'm not going to address replacing those cylinders yet. They're, they're pitted and corroded on the shaft so I know they're just eating up the seals every time that cylinder moves through the seals inside. Um, so those are getting replaced but the top isn't my primary concern right now so uh, I'm just going to leave it down for now and leave it in the closed position let that oil soak into all those seals and um, and make it a little bit easier to disassemble when the time comes to do the top. Right now my primary concern is getting the motor and transmission out and, uh, and getting that motor broken down and disassembled and inspected so I can find out what needs to be replaced inside, what doesn't. If we've got to do a full-blown rebuild on it, that we'll do it, but um, I'm hoping we don't have to go that far. I'm hoping just to freshen up the bores, throw some new rings on it and some new bearings, and we'll be good to go, but uh, I'm being uh, pessimistically optimistic, we'll say. So for me on the 66 Mustang project today, that's going to wrap it up. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed some of the video there. I'm going to try to put together a halfway decent video here. I know the disassembly stuff isn't all that entertaining. Um, 
and in the next coming days here I'll have the motor and transmission out and we can go through and, and look at all the internals and see how this motor looks after setting for 30 years and what needs to be addressed and the, the way to go about disassembling it so that you don't cause any more internal damage than already may be there. So we'll see how that goes here in the upcoming videos. Um, I am still getting to the door panels. I've got a lot of the work done on the door panels. They're about 90% there. Uh, but I haven't wanted to put that video out yet until I have a finished product because I know it's kind of boring watching me sand fiberglass. So once I get uh, a little bit of break here from the Mustang and I can focus more on those door panels, I'll get that finished up and get that, that third video on how to finish and prep and texture the door panels soon. And we've got a ton more work here on the 66 Mustang. But for today's video, guys, thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe if you're new. Uh, we've got a lot of great stuff coming up. More Ford OBS content. More, lots more on the Mustang project here. And I've already talked to a few new people here about some new projects that will be coming in. So uh, stay tuned, guys. There's going to be lots of great content on the channel. Thank you for watching.